All righty, welcome back, Financial Guys Podcast here on the Financial Guys Media Network. Mike Sparaza in studio today with a familiar face of the show, Stefan Mahailu. Stefan, thank you for joining us. Good morning. I thought your show got canceled. You're still on? No, I'm still on. I'm still back and better than ever. I got, sure. uh, well, I mean, it's always open for cancellation. You never know when it'll happen. Well, uh, I could I could get I, dropped. <laughs> and I do think we're going to resume Mike and Mahailu. We're just, uh, I'm trying to get my sea legs here as uh, Deputy Communications Director for Vivek Ramaswamy's campaign for president. But once we once we get rolling, we'll get back in the saddle again with podcasts of Mike and Mahailu and, of course, with uh, the financial guys. Big news to announce soon. So, so let's talk about that real quick because people that are watching this can see it. Um, there's a logo behind you and there is a uh, campaign behind you. So tell us a little bit about what's going on. Yeah, it's a blessing and privilege to serve as Deputy Communications Director for Vivek Ramaswamy's campaign for President of the United States. Very conservative business owner, political outsider, and it's exactly what America needs right now to lead a national revival. You know, right now you look at the field and there's a lot of politicians, there's a lot of people who have already served in office, and America is on a precipice right now. Which direction the country is going to go under under Joe Biden, the disastrous policies that have hurt families and hurt our country, or are we going to follow Vivek's vision of, you know, basically leading an American revival, an America first revival, you know, when it comes to making people feel proud about our country again, about proud about being an American. A lot of very similar themes to Ronald Reagan's campaign in 1980 when it comes to, you know, mourning in America again. So as a kid from Buffalo, New York, who grew up uh, in an alley at William and Fillmore, it is a blessing and privilege to go from, you know, working as a public servant, as a taxpayer watchdog at Erie County Comptroller, to now all of my efforts to make sure that Vivek Ramaswamy is the next commander in chief. So I, I wanted to bring you on today because I wanted to talk about, I mean, now we have, uh, I think, two or three more candidates that announced this week. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a lot of the candidates. I know, obviously, where you are right now, so I know we have to we have to kind of be careful there. But let's talk about it a little bit. So you, you have Trump, obviously, who's been in the race the longest. He announced way back when. Uh, Ron DeSantis has joined. You have uh, Larry Elder has joined. You have Mike Pence now, Chris Christie, Nikki Haley, uh, Tim Scott. You have a lot of candidates entering, and I'm sure there's going to be more between now and the end of the summer. Um, what what do you think, and I'll get into each candidate specifically in a little bit, but how do all of these candidates separate themselves? You look at, at someone like Vivek, and you can see how he separates himself. He's not afraid to talk to anybody, and he's been in the race a pretty long time now. Um, and, and he's a he's a, a business owner. He he understands politics. He understands money. So he separates himself a little bit differently than some of the other ones. So some of these ones like Nikki Haley, like Tim Scott, like Chris Christie, like Mike Pence, they're all politicians. How are you going to separate yourself from the former president, Donald Trump? I'm just waiting for your announcement for president. Well, no, no, I uh, g- give me give me about forty years, and hopefully, I'm worth a billion dollars by that. And maybe I will. <laughs> are you throwing your hat in the ring or no? <laughs> no, not now. No, no. Yeah, look, I, I think the, the Republican primary is all about who can lead a national revival as a political outsider. The Republican Party should elect an outsider and business owner as their nominee in 2024. And from purely biased perspective, that person is Vivek Ramaswamy. You know, there's a difference between running a campaign on vengeance and grievance and anger. Uh, and that's exactly what Donald Trump did in 2016 to his success winning that election. But at the end of the day, you've got to differentiate between rhetoric and results. You know, and that's why Vivek Ramaswamy always talks about the fact that we're going to take the America first agenda a lot farther than Donald Trump ever did. For example, talking about building the wall or Vivek's plan of using the military to not only protect the border, but bomb cartels and to make sure that there is no longer a free flow of fentanyl across the Mexican border eventually coming in from China. So at this point in time in this primary, you know, there's 150 candidates in it, including Vivek Ramaswamy. But I think there is a path for Vivek. When we first launched the campaign and I was there in New Hampshire uh, for the launch of it, he was at zero percent and very little name ID. You know, now a few months in, he's already gotten more than 40,000 donors to appear on the GOP debate stage. Going to be on the GOP debate stage, and it's going to be a lot of fireworks, and that's going to be the rocket fuel uh, for his campaign. But now a lot of national polls have him at 8%, a lot farther than the campaign ever thought. 
So when it comes to running for office, and I know I, I ran countywide three times, you have to think, what is your path? What is your path to victory? And whether it's Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, or Vivek Ramaswamy, you've got to have a path to victory. And as far as Vivek is concerned, you know, his path is basically being a business owner, a political outsider, which the GOP desperately needs to nominate as their candidate. At the end of the day, the question is, you know, can you take a lot more than just a platform of vengeance and anger and grievance and actually deliver for the American people? People are hungry for a cause. They're hungry for a purpose. And on the campaign trail, Vivek talks all the time about the fact that right now, if there is an empty void, when it comes to our values, people then will flock to a, a climate cult, a COVID cult, or the trans cult. Uh, we've moved away, America has, from filling that void with traditional things. Faith, family, God, you know, even our careers and our mission to make America a better place to live. And so I think at the end of the day, every candidate has to basically lay out their vision and figure out what is their path to victory in a field which appears to be about 140 candidates on the GOP side. Yeah, it's going to get interesting. And obviously there's there are some people in the field that are, you know, have, have been around a long time. You know, you, you look at Mike Pence, he's the former vice president. You look at a Nikki Haley, she's been around. You look at Tim Scott, he's been around. DeSantis might be, you know, America's governor, as they've called him. Um, the former president who is, you know, leading in the polls right now and has been doing things like it or not that have gotten him – you know, I guess a, a bigger lead in the polls than I thought he would have at this point, especially with Ron DeSantis announcing. Um, there's a lot of firepower, and I think that's a good thing. And I think you'd agree with that, Stefan. Having a lot of people and, and, and people to choose from. You know, you look at the Democrat side right now. You have Joe Biden and you have Robert Kennedy Jr., and they don't want anything to do with either of those guys talking to each other. Obviously, Robert Kennedy Jr. wants to talk. But they don't want Biden talking to him. I'd much rather have what the right has right now with a lot of good candidates than be on what the left has right now. Yeah, Vivek Ramaswamy always talks about the fact that the measure of a country is their respect and admiration for free speech. On the Democratic side of the aisle, you have the DNC basically stifling RFK Jr., who was just at the border, and trying to block him from debates. And so Vivek Ramaswamy is going to be on the debate stage. He has said many times that you know, the best way to basically knock down so-called bad ideas is with more speech and not limiting free speech. And that's why he welcomes a wide open debate stage, as many candidates as possible, but there's a specific threshold. Vivek Ramaswamy is going to be on the debate stage uh, and it's gonna be very interesting in Milwaukee. But you talk about electability and I go back to 1992. I was a college student at Syracuse University and a no-name governor named Bill Clinton from Arkansas entered the Democratic primary. And people thought, is this guy crazy? Small governor, no one knows who he is, and lo and behold, he won. Barack Obama in 2008. Everyone says, you know what, this guy's running for a cabinet position, maybe to be Hillary Clinton's vice president. There's no way, and not even one-term senator from Illinois can beat the powerful Clinton machine. Barack Obama did exactly that. Mike, 2016. Donald Trump, even days before the election, the New York Times yep. had it 90 plus percent chance of Hillary Clinton winning, and nobody thought that he could pull it off. So that's why when you talk about this very wide field, and of course I'm biased, I'm the Deputy Communications Director for Vivek Ramaswamy's campaign for president. He started at 0%, now he's at 8%, he's going to make the debate stage, and polls do not matter at all in this GOP primary until the debates take place. That is really going to separate political outsiders and business owners compared to has-been politicians and people who have already served in government and their mission to become also the next president of the United States. Do you think Donald Trump joins that debate stage? He should. You know, and Vivek Ramaswamy has said so uh, on Meet yep. the Press and numerous many other outlets that, you know, Donald Trump debated in 2016, and he should be a part of the conversation when it comes to wanting to be the nominee in 2024. We have a clean slate. It's a new election. This isn't 2016. This is 2020. And every Republican, including Vivek Ramaswamy and Donald Trump, have to make their pitch to the American people of why they should be the next commander in chief. And uh, Vivek Ramaswamy had a laser-like focus very early on the campaign of saying, okay, what do we need to do to make the debate stage? The RNC listed 40,000 small donors, been there, done that months ago. So Vivek is going to be on that debate stage. So too should Donald Trump. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, obviously, 
you know, you only know reports, right? We don't know what the real reasons are with what Donald Trump is saying. On He doesn't want to be on the debate stage, potentially. Part of it is who the moderator is. I've, I've read that. And I can understand that, too. And I think that for all the candidates, right? I, I think you want a fair, uh, bipartisan person up there that's not going to lean one way or the other. I think that's important. The other thing, you know, that, that has come out, too, they've said, well, in, in a lot of polls, he has a 30, 40 point lead. Is it worth making a mistake or, or having something go south with that type of lead? I tend to agree with you, with Vivek. I would like him on that stage. I think that's where Donald Trump's at his best, too, on that debate stage and battling it out with, with other candidates. And I think, to be honest with you, that's what all of them should do. I think that, Stefan, we talked about this far before you, know, you joined Vivek's team. You and I both kind of agreed that. that Debate stages and, and that type of thing on a campaign trail is the best way for people to watch, learn, and listen about who they really like and don't like. Yeah, I mean, Vivek Ramaswamy is crystal clear on the campaign trail. If you're afraid to go on a debate stage, how can the American people trust you to sit across the table from a foreign adversary? and fight like hell on behalf of the American people. And that's his point, is that, well, wait a minute. If you are gonna put the tape on the knuckles and swing hard and defend America in front of our fiercest critics, then you should have the mettle and the strength to sit on a GOP debate stage and tell Republicans why you should be the next commander in chief. And Vivek Ramaswamy is very clear about conducting media interviews, talking to anyone, even going to the south side of Chicago, heavily Democrat, to make his case to all Americans, not just Republicans, but all Americans, of why his America first agenda should be the vision that we use to select our next president. Again, you you do not end bad speech or stifle debate by limiting debate. You actually engage in free speech, and you want more speech. And that certainly goes for the debate stage in 2024. So, you know, again, I'm looking at this as as Donald Trump is, they'll call it the incumbent, right? He has been the president. He is coming back to run again. I know he lost in 2020, but he's coming back to run again. His record with foreign policy was fairly good based on a lot of metrics, based on a lot of what people like me and, and a lot of conservatives would say. Vivek does not have, I'll call it, the, the experience on the, the um, foreign policy end. How does he stack up or how does he differentiate himself from Donald Trump on foreign policy? I think the number one key with Vivek Ramaswamy is identifying China as the largest threat against the United States. And that's why he says right away as president of the United States, he is going to declare independence from China our biggest enemy that it's extremely dangerous for the United States of America to be dependent on our biggest enemy for the phones in our pocket and the shoes on our feet. The the biggest crystal clear difference between Vivek Ramaswamy and Donald Trump, again, is the idea of running on vengeance and anger compared to delivering results and not rhetoric for the American people. Donald Trump talked about building a wall in 2016. That's great. But Vivek Ramaswamy is taking that even further by saying, wait a minute, that's not enough to secure our border. That's not enough to stop the free flow of fentanyl across the Mexican border. That's why he said, we're going to use the U.S. military to bomb cartels, to basically use the military to protect the southern border. I think that's the big difference when it comes to running for the president of the United States, is laying out your vision like that and letting people decide. I mean, again, I used Bill Clinton and Barack Obama as examples uh, in 1992 and 2008, respectively. Bill Clinton, the governor of Arkansas, had zero foreign policy experience, obviously, being the uh, governor of a small state in the middle of the United States of America. So I think it comes to speech, Vivek making his case of China being the biggest enemy to the United States, how he's going to take on China. And he says, look, there's going to be some short term pain. We should not do business in China as long as they are have this you know, so-called unfair advantage over the United States and basically being our biggest enemy. So I think that's the biggest difference differentiating Vivek Ramaswamy and the rest of the field, including Donald Trump. Just because of your background here, list list out for us the the schedule coming up. And I don't mean Vivek's. I mean, in general, with the debates, with the primaries. I know the primaries start in 2024, but when does this really, really pick up? Is this in a month from now? Is this the fall, the, the winter time? Can you lay out the schedule going into, let's call it Iowa, New Hampshire next year? 
Yeah, I think it's yeah. picking up right now with <laughs> everybody True. running for president of the United States on the Republican side of the aisle. And it's exactly True. why Vivek Ramaswamy got into the race in February to make sure that he qualified for the debate stage, which is going to take place in Milwaukee uh, at the end of August. The debates are going to be critical. And that's going to be, I believe, August 24th, that's in the end of August. The debates are going to be incredibly critical when it comes to the Republican Party picking who the nominee is going to be in 2024. And that's why Vivek Ramaswamy worked incredibly hard getting 40,000 donors, now at 8% in national polls. That's really going to separate a business owner and political outsider against all of the traditional politicians, including Donald Trump. You'd only be an outsider once. Following the debate in Milwaukee, then the polls are really going to count. That's what's going to really separate the top three candidates. And then, of course, when it comes to the really big primaries, Iowa next year, New Hampshire, and South Carolina. I mean, you look at the history of the Iowa uh, caucus, uh, and that's why Matt Schultz uh, is joined the, the Ramaswamy campaign. That is a critical pickup for Vivek Ramaswamy of having Matt Schultz being co-chair of the Iowa caucus because he was successful in helping Rick Santorum and Ted Cruz win the Iowa caucus. He's now a part of Vivek's team. So those three early states are critical for whoever wants to be the next president of the United States, Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina. But you look at the history of those primaries. You know, Joe Biden basically took off in 2020 after winning the South Carolina primary. Donald Trump, you know, was not victorious in that 2016 Iowa caucus. So it's going to be a long road to answer your question, Mike. It's not going to be over after the debates in Milwaukee, uh, the GOP debate stage. But that's going to really differentiate guys like Vivek Ramaswamy, business owner, political outsider, against all traditional politicians. And then you're going to see really the campaign kick up when it comes to the race for South Carolina, Nevada, and New Hampshire. When the, the, the Iowa um, caucus is when? Is it February? Yeah, I don't believe there's is a it? firm date set for it, but it's going to okay. be in the early part of next year. And look, Vivek Ramaswamy is in Iowa quite a bit, New Hampshire quite a bit. I've been to New yeah. Hampshire for the launch yeah. of the campaign. He's uh, spending significant time in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, not being part of a campaign, but part of a movement when it comes yeah. to his America First agenda, uh, making sure that he's the nominee in 2024. But he's been on bus tours in all three of those states, talking to everyone, everyone when it comes to wanting to be commander in chief. And again, I know as a former elected official being on the campaign trail, and I can tell you one of the stark things that I see with Vivek Ramaswamy is he'll give a speech, he'll talk to a big crowd, but he'll stay for hours, hours talking to voters, personally making his pitch, even talking to reporters who have written so-called negative pieces about him. You know, the goal is basically talking to every single voter. Uh, especially those in Iowa, South Carolina, and New Hampshire between now and 2024. So we, we kind of talked about, you know, you, you brought up Bill Clinton, you brought up Barack Obama, which were great points about people that, you know, maybe didn't have a chance in the beginning. Let me ask you about somebody like Mike Pence for a second. Where does he see an avenue? And again, I know that you're not working on his campaign, but where does he see an avenue Obviously, the Trump base is probably not voting for him, right? And people who don't want Trump but maybe want, you know, the business owner side would flock to a Vivek, right? Um, I know personal family that w are going to be probably voting for a person like Vivek because they love his attitude, they love who he is, what he bought, you know, where he came from, and what he believes in. But but where does a guy like Mike Pence is he going after? You know, the Christians is he going after? you know, people that just don't like Donald Trump. Like, where does he see his avenue? Because a majority, and I'll say a large majority of the base, feels like he left Donald Trump high and dry. I mean, wh where does he see an avenue? And I'll bring up a Chris Christie, too. I, I saw his campaign, um, you know, event that he had the other day. It was not very inspiring. That's my opinion. It doesn't have to be yours. But where do some of these people, again, like I can see a Vivek. I can see a DeSantis. I can see Trump where they think they can win. Some of these people, though, they don't even – there's just no excitement either. How do you see that playing out? Three times in your last question, you mentioned the word avenue. And it's actually pretty brilliant on your part. I'm not blowing smoke here because it's the perfect word 
when it comes to running for president in the United States or running for dog catcher in the town of Elma. You have to have an avenue. You have to have a path to victory. And right now, there's a lot of candidates who are bashing Donald Trump, Mike Pence included. You mentioned Chris Christie. A friend of mine jokingly said his campaign announcement was more of a TED Talk than a pitch to run for president <laughs> right. of the United States. Right. I mean, I'll go back to Pete Buttigieg. I mean, for the most part, for the most part, people had the belief of this guy's not running for president. He's running for a vice presidency or a cabinet position. A lot of people in the GOP field fall under that category. You can make the claim or strengthen the argument that a lot of people in the GOP field are basically running for a potential cabinet position or maybe consideration to be vice president for whoever wins the GOP nomination. But there's candidates like Donald Trump. I know for a fact Vivek Ramaswamy is in this race to be the next commander in chief. There is zero talk about any kind of a cabinet position, vice presidency. He is running to be commander in chief in 2024. And people are not going to be fooled. They're going to know who the pretenders are. People who are just throwing their hat in the ring to either build name ID or to run in the future or to be considered for a cabinet pick or to be considered for vice president. I can say from talking personally to Vivek Ramaswamy, he is in this race to win it as a business owner and political outsider. Yeah, and I think he's put himself out there. He's obviously been, I've, I've seen him on Tucker. I've seen him on a lot of different TV shows. He's, he's done, and he's not afraid to, to go on any show, I think, which is important. I'd love to see him go on The View because um, I just, I, I hate that show so much, and I would love to see somebody beat him up. Tim Scott did actually a great job beating him up earlier this week. But, you know, I think that's important. I think, again, you're not going to know about people if you don't hear or see from them, and I think that's really important. And, and I'm going to go back to what you said about, you know, the bashing Trump thing. Uh, it's okay, in my opinion, to disagree. You know, I may not agree with everything Vivek says. I may not agree with everything DeSantis says. But I think this idea, and, and, and Trump does it too, right, bashing other opponents. But I think the idea of just bashing Trump and if, like a Chris Christie, if that's going to be your platform, nobody's going to vote for you because nobody wants to hear, oh, anything but Trump. Okay, that's great, but what does that mean? Tell us your platform. And, I, you know, Glenn Wiggles even said it. Vivek's done a nice job of telling us what his platform is, what he wants to do. And I think if DeSantis wants a chance, DeSantis better start doing that too because DeSantis is not really, in my opinion, giving us a platform right now. He's more just spewing things out day by day and traveling the country. You know exactly where... Vivek Ramaswamy stands on numerous issues. Foreign policy. China is our biggest threat, and we need to use the U.S. military to bomb cartels and secure our border. Reforming the federal bureaucracy. Giving bureaucrats an eight-year term limit, just like the President of the United States, to drain the swamp. Shutting down and reforming the FBI. The Department of Education. Things of that nature. You know exactly where he stands. Reforming the Fed making sure that we get rid of 90% of bureaucrats and going back to the idea of, okay, we're just gonna focus on strengthening the dollar and not adding to the deep state. You know exactly where Vivek Ramaswamy stands. I think that's the biggest difference here in 2024. In 2016, there was a campaign of vengeance and anger. And that really drove a lot of people to polls and then propelled President Trump to uh, the position of commander in chief. But we're eight years later. You're only an outsider once. And when it comes to this campaign in the GOP primary, voters have to ask themselves, is our country moving in the right direction just with vengeance and anger, or do we need a business owner and an outsider who has a vision of America that will lead a national revival? The same way that Ronald Reagan did in 1980. This country is hurting. We're really hurting. And a lot of it has to do with how we feel about America. This is the greatest country in the world. I'm a family of immigrants. I thank God every single day that a poor kid from the east side of Buffalo who grew up in extreme poverty can go professionally to a position where he's helping Vivek Ramaswamy become the next president of the United States. This is a phenomenal country. And that's what Vivek's platform is all about, that we are missing something within the fabric of our national identity. We can't even define what it means to be an American. How can you fight for your country when you don't know what you're fighting for? And right now you see this climate cult, the trans cult, the COVID cult. They're filling that void right now with a lot of Americans and they're feeling good about that. Well, that's wrong. We need to feel good and great about America again. 
look, we, you know, we talk about these cults, Mike. Moms for Liberty has a huge chapter in the Buffalo, New York area. Uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center just labeled Moms for Liberty a hate group. And you want to talk about Vivek Ramaswamy, he signed their pledge, their parent pledge, right away without asking any of us, without talking to a consultant, because he had the courage of his convictions to sign that pledge and stand with Moms for Liberty. He's going to stand for the United States of America. But I think in 2024, we have to ask, who is the candidates who are going to lead a national revival and who can get the job done? Yeah, and, and you know, I, I've told you, too, with, you know, my my family with the drug issue that I've seen for, you know, I saw for years, uh, losing two brothers. For me, you know, the border is one of the most important things. That's why I voted for Trump. That's why I'm interested in what Vivek's saying, because I'm all for taking out cartels and, and strengthening that border. Anything, if there's one issue that I'm passionate about, that's the one. So that's important to me. Um, and I would love to tell him that because it's, it, it's important to a lot of people. Every state and city now is a border state and city now across America because we've allowed millions of people to come across and millions of pounds of drugs to come across. Probably we don't have the actual data, but they're saying tons and actual tons and tons and tons of fentanyl, crack, heroin, all that stuff is coming over that border. That is scary. Um, Stefan, a couple things on rapid fire real quick, because I, I haven't talked to you a lot about this on air. So. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of these crazy issues going on around the country right now. Um, I, I, the view has been, and I have to talk about the view on all my shows cause I hate them so much, but the view has, has, uh, they've gone absolutely crazy. Um, everything now, I mean, not that it wasn't before, but they're now telling African American people like Tim Scott, you're the exception. And, um, you need to understand that you're the exception. H how do we fix that problem? Because, you know, TV stations and TV programs like The View are really a detriment to many people of color across America, to be honest with you. Well, basically, the solution is doing exactly what you're doing right now. Podcasts, alternative platforms. You know, Vivek Ramaswamy is the first millennial GOP candidate for a president. And we've gone from fireside chats to podcasts. Vivek is a very popular uh, podcast. You can find it on all the different platforms. And he's talking about his vision for America with different guests from all over the country on a platform like a podcast. But it goes down to the main issue where, you know, Vivek Ramaswamy talked about it in his original book, Woke Inc. He talks about it in the campaign trail. There is a void in America. There's a hole in our hearts. And if we don't fill it with the traditional values that we're familiar with, patriotism, God, faith, family, even our work, it's going to be filled by radical progressives and liberals like the hosts of The View, telling you know Vivek and other people of color that, well, you don't really represent us because you're a conservative, because you're a Republican. I think the answer is filling that void with the, the traditional values that made America great, the same revival that Ronald Reagan led in 1980. That, that's what it's really all about, is identifying basically what it means to be an American again, what it means to love and feel good about our country again. And that's why the 2024 election is so incredibly important because we are standing on that cliff, Mike. And which direction are we going to go into? Now, I, I love you like a brother. I know you so extremely well. And even from hosting our own podcast, I've talked to your dad and, and we've shared and you have shared the incredible pain of losing your brothers when it comes to fentanyl crisis. We need to talk about that. That is a crisis. How are we going to solve the crisis at the southern border? How are we going to stop fentanyl from going from China to Mexico and into every single corner of America? It's not just a southern border problem. Fentanyl is killing kids in every corner of America. So when I hear Vivek Ramaswamy say, I'm going to use the military to bomb cartels. I'm going to use the military to shut down the border. That sounds like someone I want to elect as president rather than just, hey, let's build a wall. And here's what I'll say to that, too. The fentanyl is obviously the hot topic right now because of how lethal it is and how quick it can happen, right? I mean, you could, you could smell the, the dust of fentanyl and, and be in trouble. It's happened to police officers when they do drug busts and whatnot. But I think for me, too, it's 
all drugs pouring over that border. I, I look at and, and, and what a country like America is doing about it. You look at New York City. I know you saw this in, in a group chat with us, Stefan, but the, the crack vending machine, right? Like, here's a crack pipe. Oh, and by the way, here's some lip balm, too, in case your lips get chapped as you're on crack, right? Oh, and here's some condoms, too, just in case you make a bad decision while you're on crack. Like, oh, and don't forget the Narcan. You know, th- this is it's, – it's all drugs to me is the problem right now. Fentanyl obviously is the leading one that we need to take care of, but it's crack, it's meth, it's heroin, it's all these things laced with, with fentanyl or not laced. I mean, we need to actually attack the drug problem in this country and stop just saying, hey, let's open up safe shooting zones. That doesn't work. Pro- prolonging a drug abuse doesn't fix the addict, right? It just prolongs the drug abuse. And, and I don't and, and, and to, to recap all that, too, I think what you're saying about loving America, too, I think this is part of the problem. We've glorified drugs. We've glorified making terrible decisions with no consequences. That's what we've done. And you've created a lot of angry, miserable people because they have nothing in life because all their whole life they've wasted away. Whether you're a millennial, a Gen Z or whatever you are, we, you're wasting away every day of your life because you're angry and miserable and unhappy. And then, then it's like, oh, it's our fault. Well, it's our fault. No, you've made decisions and refused to get off your ass. Well, and let's talk about that very serious drug issue. Mike, again, no family should ever, ever have to go through what you and your dad and your family went through. You lost two of your brothers to the drug crisis in America. That is sad and tragic. It should never happen to another American family again. The Biden administration's foreign policy when it comes to fentanyl, drugs across the border, is appeasement via vending machines. All the vending machines in New York City were cleaned out in a day of crack pipes and things of that nature, chapstick even, when it comes to appeasing the fight against drugs. And that's why I say candidates like Vivek Ramaswamy, that's why I'm so proud to work for him, is he's saying, okay, we just can't be angry about it. We can't just say, let's build a wall. What are we going to do about it? And, And out of anyone that I've heard, Republican, Democrat, or anyone running for president, No one has said we're going to use the military to shut down our border and bomb the cartels. And then when, you know, getting back to your other point, Mike, about feeling good about America again. I mean, talk to anyone in this country and say, are we better off than we were four years ago? And the answer is absolutely not. Under the disastrous policies of President Biden, when it comes to appeasement at the border, letting people over, letting fentanyl flow across our border. And I think... Anyone in the GOP primary, if you're a Republican voter, you have to think, who is best to lead our national revival? You only get to be an outsider once. Vivek Ramaswamy is an outsider. Vivek is an outsider, business owner, political outsider. So you have to think, who is the outsider that can lead our country to a national revival and make us feel great about America again? Because we are the greatest country in the world. I never would have had the opportunities that I have You know, serving as a journalist, it wasn't fake news back then when I was a reporter, honorably serving as Erie County Comptroller, the taxpayer watchdog for nine years, and now working on a presidential campaign for Vivek Ramaswamy. I'm literally living the American dream, but we don't feel good about living in America right now, and that's got to change in 2024. You may or may not be able to answer this question, so I'll ask it this way, and you can... (laughs) you, you can, You can shut me down if you need to, but... If if it doesn't go Vivek's way in 2024, is this a one and done type of thing for him, or would he go into politics further, or would he run again in the future? Because I think I'm asking that as a millennial myself at 31 years old and someone that wants to see youth in this movement because we need youth in this movement. And again, I'm not saying he can win, he can't win. I'm not getting involved in that, but I'm just saying with Trump, with DeSantis, with people like Vivek, somebody's going to lose, obviously, and somebody's going to win. And I want to see youth in this movement. Uh, I need youth in this movement at 31 years old. I need uh, promise for the future. So if this doesn't go his way in 2024, is that it for him, or would he continue this road down the road? It's a great and it's a very fair question. It was the same question that was asked of Bill Clinton in 1992. You can't be serious. You're a governor from Arkansas. You're not going to be president. What are you really running for? Barack Obama in 2008, he was in the middle of his first term in the U.S. Senate. And at that time in 2008, going against the Clinton machine and Hillary Clinton, people asked Barack Obama the same question in 2008. Why are you really running? You can't beat Hillary Clinton. And just like 
now. Vivek Ramaswamy is getting the same question. Are you really serious for 2024? And the answer is yes. He's in it to win it, to be the next commander in chief in 2024. And the only reason I'm putting my hand up on that, the only difference I will say between those two people and someone like Vivek is, and I'm, I'm going to speak for him when I say this, he doesn't need this necessarily, right? In terms of Absolutely he's not. he's not a career politician, right? Like those people, that was their career. They knew it, you know, Hillary Clinton, or, well, Hillary too, but Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. I, I look at Vivek the same way I look at Trump. Like he doesn't need this. This isn't his career. He's got, he's got his stuff going on out there. And to be honest with you, sometimes I wonder, and, and I would say this to Vivek, if I met him, and I'll say as a Trump, if I meet him, why the hell are you doing this? And, and I get it. You love America. You want to help America. But man, I, I mean, I give them credit because it, it's, it's a war every day. And, and all people do is try and hate on you and, and bring up things and create false stories about you uh, or, or over exaggerate things about you. It takes a lot of stones to do it. And I give them credit, but sometimes with two guys like that, that have made a great living and know what they're doing. I'm like, why would you put yourself in that position? Yeah. Vivek Ramaswamy is living the arc of the American dream Two loving parents that instilled in him the values of faith and being a good person and, and especially the values of education. Went to Harvard as a biology major, law school at Yale, and, and basically built from scratch multi-billion dollar companies and worked directly yep. with treatments that literally saved the lives of young children and women and built wealth, according to Forbes, the tune of $600 million. He's not running for the paycheck. And he's got skin yep. in the game. He's making a significant investment of his own resources to become president. Why? Because at 37, he sees that there's a lot of similarities between this election and the election of 1980 when it comes to leading a national revival. For Vivek, it is all about leading a national revival and making America a better place to live. It's not about the paycheck. Trust me, he's been incredibly successful uh, from a purely financial perspective. But I think that speaks to his motives. That why would you do this? And the only rational answer and true answer is that he loves America. He wants to see us go back to believing in our country again, having those values again of faith, family, hard work, our religion, our education, and literally making America a better place to live again. Yeah, and I think you look at it too, like I said, and this is why it's so important for me, the youth, the youth movement, I'll call it, because... Gen Z scares the hell out of me. Nothing against people in Gen Z, but I see people like Harry Sisson on 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 TikTok and and Twitter, and I want to just uh, lose my mind. But but you look at you know Gen Z has been built to be you know um, to 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 cry and whine, right? And and even millennials do the same. I want to see a strong person that's that's young and youthful because that's what we need. And on the flip side, if you don't see Gen Z crying and whining, you see our current president falling over sandbags because he can't look down when he walks, right? I mean, it's it's concerning, right? Both sides are concerning to your revival point, whether it's Donald Trump, Vivek Ramaswamy, Ron DeSantis, Tim Scott, whoever it is, we need a revival. We need you know, faith in America again. We need faith in our voting system again. We need people that care about America again. And we need competent people that can actually talk to the American public. That's the other thing, right? I mean, when was the last time Joe Biden did an actual press conference? Almost a year ago? Right? Like, that's unacceptable as president. I'm sorry. Vivek Ramaswamy has described him as a hollowed out husk who's really not president. That he's basically, yeah. you know, being run by puppeteers of the managerial class. And it's elder abuse. It truly is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Vivek is 37. He's a highly successful business owner that does not need the paycheck to run for president. He's doing it for the right reason. You know, again, I talk about communicating to Americans. He's doing it in non-traditional ways. You know, you go back to FDR and his fireside chats. We've gone from that to podcasts and not just traditional campaigning, but actually having a podcast to reach yeah. all voters across the country. But you're right, Mike. You know, we, we look at President Biden, who, again, Vivek Ramaswamy has described President Biden as a hollowed out husk who's being puppeteered by the managerial class who will do anything to screw over the American people in order for power and control. That is not what our founding fathers built America on. You know, we should basically hire people to run the government who were hired to run the government, as Vivek yep. Ramaswamy says all the time, not this managerial class that cares more about self-interest than American interest. And, you know, Vivek Ramaswamy is a very avid tennis player. 
I cannot play tennis for the life of me. I'm terrible. Ping pong is about as good as I can get. Uh, he's an incredible tennis player. So I think of all of the, the videos at Vivek2024.com or on our social media, uh, Vivek actually playing tennis across the country against some pretty good players. And then I think compare that to President Biden, who's being puppeteered by the managerial class, who is falling all over the place on a regular basis. That's the choice we're going to have in 2024. Yeah, and I think I think it's it's time to to actually, you know, look at real issues too. You know, and I think that's where candidates like I think we have on the Republican side that are good candidates will actually look at issues that are impacting America every day. And I think that's really important because we need to stop voting on feelings and voting on real things because at the end of the day, feelings can only get you so far, right? I mean, you look at you look at what's going on. I know this is and I'll end with this stuff on, but I know this is near and dear to you. This this idea of, you know, let's try and play nice with with Putin or let's try and, you know, play nice with China. It's not working right. You need somebody strong that will put these people in their place. And again, to my foreign policy on Donald Trump before, you know, I truly do believe when Donald Trump said at the town hall that I was at, I, I do believe that. If Donald Trump was in office or somebody with a backbone was in office, Putin is not in Ukraine right now. China's not threatening Taiwan right now, right? I mean, I just – and China is, you know, bumping ships with us in, in the Pacific, right? Like, that stuff doesn't happen when you – and, and people can say what they want about Trump. Oh, he was just buddy-buddy with Putin. Whatever it was, they were afraid of Trump to make these types of moves. And now with Biden in office, they don't care. They know, as you, what did you say? I was going to say bag of bones. What did you say? A hollowed out version of the, yeah, or a bag of bones. One of the two. (laughs) That's what we have in the White House right now. And the world knows it. We need strength in America. We need people that are strong, that are unafraid. And I, I hope, I hope these debates and this primary gives us that type of person. Think of it this way. Vivek Ramaswamy has made the point that if we're a Russian spy balloon that floated over the United States of America, It would have been shot down in seconds, but it was a Chinese spy balloon. And of course, it was allowed to travel over the United States of America, gather satellite intelligence, and send it to our biggest enemy. And that's why Vivek Ramaswamy says, our biggest enemy is China. We are dependent on them for the shoes in our feet and the phones in our pocket. And Vivek says all the time, there's going to be some short-term pain. We should not do business with our biggest enemy. That is negotiating from a position of strength. It's showing China, we mean business. We're not going to conduct business in your country until we basically pound you and you're no longer our biggest adversary. That is a position of strength, not weakness. And and the last thing I forgot, because I saw this the other day and I thought you just brought up the spy balloon. They brought up an interesting thing. I don't know if you saw that plane that was that um, they, they must have lost, you know, cabin pressure or something. But it went close to New York City and then peeled back because it must have been on autopilot, right? They were ready to shoot that thing down, and they were tra- following it, traveling, whatever, in seconds. But a spy balloon went from our west coast to our east coast over the course of many days, and they didn't shoot that down. And I thought that was very interesting because I didn't even think about that. Maybe it was Jack Posobiec that said it. But I'm like, wait a minute, that's a great point, right? Like, they were ready to shoot that plane down immediately when it did that turnaround because they were unsure what was going on. Yet they let a spy balloon go across our country for many days. I think it was over a week. Um, It just goes to show you, like you said, our government today does not have our best interests, and that's a scary thought because that's why we have them here. And the last thing I'll say is, you know, one thing I I would like to is, Let's reduce the size of government. You brought up before about finding people that will do their job. I agree with that, but let's get one person that will do their job, not seven that can collaborate to do the same job, right? I think that would help us too. Let's look at affirmative action. Affirmative action was put in place via executive order by the President of the United States. It could be eliminated using the same mechanism. Vivek Ramaswamy is saying on day one, I am getting rid of affirmative action via executive order. The FBI, we are shutting down the FBI, according to Vivek Ramaswamy, and building a a bigger and better infrastructure of law enforcement. The ATF, Department of Education, even putting in limits of eight years for federal bureaucrats to basically return the power away from the managerial class, away from the big bloated bureaucracy in Washington, D.C., and giving it back to the people and where it belongs, 
the American people. And I'm excited for 2024. It's going to be a great ride. And it really is. As Again, I always say, as a kid from Buffalo, to be on the campaign of a presidential candidate, and also, too, just a really good guy who's yep. running for the right reasons and leading a national revival. And it's going to be a great year, to say the least. Yeah, and, and I'll say I, I this is, you know, the, the second – I paid attention to the 2016 election. I really paid attention to the 2020 election. And now knowing more, because I followed politics now for almost eight years – seeing this this type of thing is is a lot of fun, right? I mean, it's a lot of fun for people on the outside because I, I'm not working for a candidate. Obviously, I have a podcast and talk about politics all the time. It's fun to watch. I think the Republican side, as much as it's going to get ugly, in my opinion, we're going to get the best candidate or one of the best candidates because I think the debates will help, the campaigns will help. I think it's fun to see who we're going to pick. Um, and I just hope that that this leads us down a path of, of a win in 2024 because America desperately needs it. Yeah, it's um, a great country. I mean, again, I, I think of my family that fled a communist regime to give me the, the freedoms that they never experienced ever or would have yep. under the iron fist of a communist regime. And I, literally growing up dirt poor, you know, my parents and my, my mom especially would always say, you know, through God's grace, faith and education, you can do anything you want. In America, because it really is the greatest country in the world. And it's true through God's grace, faith, education and hard work. You know, I, I feel blessed beyond belief that I, I've won the, the mega millions every day for having an amazing wife who can't believe she married me, actually had to be an arranged marriage or she lost a drunken wager. Great. We all feel that way. We all feel that way. I have the same. Yeah. You told me that privately and <laughs> now we're talking about it publicly. But yeah, it's just America is the greatest country in the world. It really is, and it's it's worth fighting for, Mike. So you won't be doing um, deputy communications for AOC 2028 then? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, she keeps yeah. beating down my door. I'm like, look, I'm busy on the Vegas campaign. I'm getting excited for the bill yeah. season, so sorry, AOC. Yeah. I, I just can't do it. Can you believe yeah, – let's well. talk bills real quickly before we wrap up. Yeah. Can you believe Josh Allen is on the cover of Madden? I know. The Madden curse. I don't even know what to do anymore. Like, like the, the bills are good. They're constantly competitive. The Sabres look like they're getting better. 20 years of disaster. I'm just, it, it doesn't feel right almost having things go our way. I got a text from a friend of mine that says, hey, you're not going to believe he's on the cover of Madden. I'm like, please don't say Josh Allen. Because, you know, for folks who aren't familiar, the, the curse of the Madden cover, the video game, whatever player's on the cover that year gets injured or there's some kind of calamity. I'm like, oh, please don't tell me Josh Allen. Please don't tell. And then it's Josh Allen. The good news, though, is a couple of years ago, I think it was uh, Mahomes won the Super Bowl after being on the cover. So hopefully we have that luck. Hopefully lightning strikes twice. Hey, how's yes. your daughter, yes. by the way? How's your baby girl? Daughter's good. She's going to be, uh, what's the date today? In 12, uh, 10 days, she'll be uh, five months old already. Wow. Do you have the receipt? Yeah. Are you taking her back? No, no, she, she's great. I can't, I can't send her back. She, she's a keeper. I got to keep this Wrapped one. Wrapped around your finger. I know yeah. you. She, she yeah. rules the roost already at five months old, I'll bet. Yeah, yeah. She is, uh, she's a joy for us, my parents, Sarah's parents. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Obviously, a first-time parent for me. So uh, I recommend it to everybody. I truly do because it's been a joy and uh, the best decision we made. Oh, that's so. awesome, buddy. Good to hear. Yeah. Stefan Mihailu, give me your title one more time, Stefan. Deputy, Deputy Communications, Communications Director. And she's bottle go. washer for the Vivek Ramaswamy campaign for president. He even takes out the garbage, folks. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stefan, thank you so much for joining us. We'll do this again. Maybe after the debate, we'll do this again and talk about the debate. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping to... I'm hoping to get out to one of these debates because I, I, I would love to see this stuff live. I, I was at the town hall, like I said, the Trump CNN town hall, which, by the way, um, the uh, CNN or yeah, CNN CEO got canned yesterday, probably because of that debate. That was not a good move for them. Well, it's, it's um, but the, it's the, I call it the Vivek curse, though. That's why you got to be careful. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of hesitant on putting Vivek on your podcast because if you think about it, Don Lemon fired. Uh, Vivek was scheduled to go on Tucker Carlson the Monday he got fired. So that's strike number two. Of course, it was Chuck Todd from NBC that had a huge fight and blow up about trans issues, and he's yep. gone. So that's three for three right there. I'm kind of hesitant about booking him on Sparaz's podcast because I don't want you to get the, the, the curse of Vivek, just like the curse of Madden. Yeah, that that's true. That's true. But I, I, guess, I guess my good part is is that 
you know, at the end of the day, if I if I got canned for my podcast duties, I'll just go back to my other podcast duties. So we'll cancel one of the two podcasts. That'll work. And we'll get him, we'll um, get him on. We'll get Vivek on. Yeah, that sounds great. I look forward to that. Love to talk to him. Um, Stefan, thanks again for joining us. Folks, if you need us throughout the week, 833-FIN-GUYS. If you want to see this podcast and all podcasts, financialguysmedia.com. Don't forget about our new morning show. It's a 15-minute news brief rundown every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8.15, also on financialguysmedia.com. Follow us on Twitter at FinGuys, on Instagram at FinancialGuys, on Facebook at The Financial Guys. This is the place where money meets politics. We will see you next week.